stream. Sonny, let's start with you. Uh, can you go back to the previous slide, please? If you appeared before the CRTC net neutrality hearings, what would you say? It's a very good question. I'm going to think about that for a second. Um, that, that's a big question. I mean, one of the problems with net neutrality is there's a lot of uh, discussion, and I think you'll hear it from the, the two fellows on my left uh, uh, coming up as to what is net neutrality, and what is traffic shaping, are they the same? Are they different? Why should they be different? Why should they be bundled together as being the same? So the first thing where I think uh, if I were before the CRTC uh, net neutrality hearings would be I'd want to have a discussion uh, and I'd want to make sure that the commissioners were, were attuned to the fact that there is a difference between those two. Um, now, whether you treat them the same in terms of policy, uh, that's a question left up to the, the CRTC. So I think that's probably how I'd like to start that but I'm sure you'll come around and I'll have more to say after hearing about Michael Stewart. Okay. Um, I would start by saying deal with the low-hanging fruit. Uh, and the low-hanging fruit includes no content blocking, uh, which notwithstanding, and uh, TELUS is, ironically, I suppose, given that they're the funder of this, they are the poster child for content blocking because they did in one instance, and it is only in one instance, yes, it's once. Four years ago. But here's the, here's the one block access to 600 websites as they were trying to block access to just one. Uh, now, that was incompetence, by the way. Okay. But, but, but here, but, all right, so, so you're both incompetent and. Sensorial. <laughs> and I guess my, my question is, are, were you also breaking the law? Because as I read your. As I read your position paper, the position paper says that we already have in Canada the ability to deal with issues like blocking content. Well, you blocked content. So were you breaking the law then? Uh, and so I, do you acknowledge that you broke the law? Uh, or, and you were incompetent apparently, or is, it, or is it the case that there is an out for this kind of situation, in which case we actually do have an issue? And I think that's actually this, the, the reason that, that I bring it up, a lot of people bring it up, because of course it is, it's kind of the big question. If, if, if a carrier were, for its own purposes, in a position to block certain kinds of content, I think everybody would agree that's hugely problematic. And the fact that it happened even once, if it's legal to do it, well then that's a big problem and we need to address it. If it's illegal to do that, it would be good to have the company actually acknowledge, I think for the first time, that what they did broke the law. But it's not just blocking content, right? It's transparency. So we keep hearing about, here's, you know, you've got lots of choice. Apparently it's a competitive marketplace. We don't, as consumers, have any real sense of the kind of traffic management that takes place. So many carriers, and not necessarily tell us, have been in the business of engaging in different kinds of shaping and throttling and the like. And they tell consumers that you're getting X, but they give you Y. I don't think that you can expect a consumer to make an informed choice if you're not actually telling them what the, the, the true nature of the service that you're providing. In other countries, they've addressed that. They've said that there's got to be certain kinds of transparency and openness in terms of the services. And this happens in the wireless space, too, where certain carriers advertise unlimited and then look at the fine print, and it's not so unlimited. Dave, did you want to add something to that? <laughs> <laughs> well, which bit of it? Um, so I was just getting started. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, just coming back to the, the blocking of side spec, and then we had to let it go. I mean, the content itself in two courts was judged as being required or perfectly adequate to take it down, the material itself. The point that you're making, however, I think is a very strong one, which is it's not our decision, nor is it actually your decision, to determine what he or she should be able to look at, with the exception of stuff that we've decided is socially reprehensible, and there's absolute agreement on that, and we have no problem. But. Um, Basically, the presumption here is that we want to throttle or alter or in some way degrade what you wish to do. And we already have a situation, I mean, the argument ends up being somewhat disingenuous anyway because you've got certain folk who are already, at their expense, providing a superior experience. So, for instance, Google is quietly investing, well, actually, sometimes not so quietly. They have facilities all over the place. What they're doing is increasingly replacing what used to be um, public network or 
uh, facilities that they leased to being their own so they control it. You've got a number of companies that actually use edge caching to provide a superior service. We're not doing anything about that. I think that from TELUS's point of view, we utterly agree with the point on transparency. In fact, we go out of our way to make a point. We do not traffic shade. And in some circumstances, you've got people who are using the claim that they're improving the quality for all of you by altering the experience of some. And that is getting all mixed up with net neutrality. It's assumed that we're getting in the way to actually alter how you get to things. Our position all the way through is that we should have some uh, ability to load balance. That's what we mean. This is not about altering how traffic behaves. It's not favoring one set of traffic over another. It's attempting to try and make sure that everybody has equal rights in terms of access. When you talk about they advertise one speed and provide another, that's nothing to do with net neutrality or throttling. In some cases, it's because they have old plant. And the marketing guys have said 10 megabits per second, but the piece of wire to your house is only giving four. That is it's nothing to do yeah, with so, that. Sorry, very quickly, that, that's actually not what I'm referring okay. to. Everybody knows that, that there's that separate issue about the truth in advertising in terms of what, you, what they claim you get and what you actually do get. And there are countries that have addressed that too, talking about advertising okay. minimum speeds rather than so-called okay. maximum speeds. Yeah. What I'm talking about is Bell, for example, uh, throttling at an 80 per 80 percent back in terms of the speeds that you actually get uh, at certain times of the day, not telling them about it. That's something quite different. Uh, and uh, and one other one other thing, just because I hate to give up on this content thing, the court did not say that it was okay to block those sites because there was a problem with no, the content. What they said decide. was that the particular pieces of content, there were particular pieces of information that themselves were they ordered the site to remove them. That's a far cry from legitimizing any, in any way blocking the site itself that there was somehow that so the site as a whole was problematic. That's not but this does lead into one of the issues that Minister Clement <laughs> um, should be looking at, although it's not really in his jurisdiction, which does have to do with the kind of content that should be monitored or not monitored. And I think we have a whole set of questions in Canada that are, um, it's quite interesting to see the Western world increase surveillance of its own populations um, in the hope of sort of controlling content when in fact, um, it's completely unable to deal with threats of terrorism, et cetera, that result theoretically from such content being on the internet. So I think there's a huge contradiction there. It is an issue we need to look at. Um, the CFTPA, for those of you who are members, Canadian Film and Television Producers Association, excellent, excellent paper on net neutrality and uh, management. They suggest that the way forward is to upgrade the quality of the networks and to invest in the networks and to create a regime where it's possible for content to flow equally. If they're your association, read it and support them.